All right, so what I'm going to do now is just put you on hold for just a second so I can talk to the Minister of Women Affairs, um, Dame Pauline Talon. I mean, this is your show technically. We're, we're discussing all things gender and all things uh, women. You've, you've seen the kind of numbers and statistics that, that we have. It's almost as though we're hem hemorrhaging on every front where, where you have a GBV. How are you responding to this nationally? Thank you very much. Gender-based violence is quite a very disturbing issue and it's hyping daily, particularly with COVID-19. I want to start by thanking the UN resident coordinator, Edward Callon, and the EU ambassador, um, Kelton, for putting, for this partnership of the initiative, Fortlight Initiative, to eliminate violence against women and children. I commend this great partnership and initiative. And uh, so uh, gender-based violence, I want everybody to know that it's not just a woman issue, but it's a societal problem that all hands must be on deck. I uh, saw the figures that you've just shown us and I must tell you that those figures, for every one reported case of gender-based violence, 10 are not reported. And I'm happy the last speaker that you just interviewed on the street confirms that, that some communities, community leaders, try to suppress and stop people from re reporting uh, gender-based violence. That is not acceptable. And that's why all hands must be on deck. People must come out and speak and support and encourage victims. It is the perpetrators that should be shamed. And that's where I will commend the chairman of the Governor's Forum, uh, Governor Faimi. He is one of the first governors that launched an, uh, the sex offenders register in his state. Lagos has done that. If you recall last year, during the 16 days uh, activism for gender-based violence, I launched the um, sex offenders register here at the national level. And we expect every state to launch the sex offenders register where perpetrators of uh, rape should be publicly shamed. There are pictures put out there and then the uh, institutions handling this should dealt with deal with them appropriately. If one or two are dealt with, shamed, their pictures publicly known, it will help stem the spread so, and the so hype the, of gender-based violence. This sex violence. offenders register, but where, where, where way, is it available? If you can hear me, where is it actually available? Because um, uh, it's all supposed to be operationalized through NAPTIP. But when you go online, you find that it, it takes you, the link takes you to um, the register for essential service providers. There are actually the pictures that you're talking about. Um, what is the idea? Are people supposed to be able to log on and then see these offenders and know they should be safe in their area? It's not quite working like that yet. So are you aware of that and how, you know, how is it supposed to be accessed by the public? Each state, each community, if all our governors launch, an, uh, uh, launch the sex offenders register and put it into use, it will help a lot. We have it here in Abuja, in Naptip, where the pictures, their address, everything is put on the uh, site. It, the, the essence is to expose them and to shame them. But if people are not publicly shamed and put on a... Uh, their pictures put on the screen, they will continue to hide and continue this death, deadly act. And in most cases, they even kill the victims. It is a problem that the society must aggressively join hands together to address. What uh, UN and EU are doing is good. Mr. President has shown so much commitment. He has publicly addressed this matter and he has indicated zero tolerance to rape and sexual, uh, uh, sexual uh, gender-based violence. The same with the Senate. The Senate president has met 
a pronouncement. I'm happy the Deputy Senate President is here. He has also proposed a bill that was passed on the floor of the Senate. And I'm trusting God that when it gets to the lower house, it will also be passed. You've heard him talk about these technical working teams. He says he's working very, very closely um, with your ministry about that. What is the first thing that they have done in the last, let's say, three months where we've seen this huge spike to assist this fight? Obviously, we've seen the kind of numbers that have come out just March and April. We're in August now, and obviously we are with the ease of lockdown. For, of those committees that he's talking about, which one would you say um, has made the most impact on your ministry right now? Thank you very much. Um, the steering committee he talked about is making an impact. And uh, we are working closely with him. Um, the entire cabinet of Mr. President are fully committed to support and fight rape and gender-based violence. I remember when I presented um, the memo to the Federal Executive Council in the uh, midst of the high spike. That was in June, 10th of June, actually. That day was remarkable because Mr. President and the entire cabinet unanimously supported the uh, memo and that was what led to Mr. President directing the Attorney General to put in place an interministerial committee where we can all work together to uh, address the problems of rape and gender-based violence. As a follow-up, Mr. President called and gave a marching order to the Inspector General of Police because normally the police is the first spot of call when uh, there's a case of rape. And a lot of complaints are reaching us. That was before, but now the situation is uh, improving since Mr. President gave the marching order to the Inspector General and he has taken it down across uh, uh, his team to ensure that victims are not molested when they come to report cases of rape and gender-based violence. And Mr. President directed the Inspector General that all rape cases and gender-based violence must be treated with dispatch. Our problem now is enforcement and implementation of the VAPT Act and the Child's Rights Act. All right, just, we uh, have just to mention. In place, mm. But the problem is implementation. Just to mention that we did invite the Inspector General of Police to, to, to address us at this town hall. Hopefully, um, before the end of it, we should see him or someone from, from um, his area. But I think you're just trying to finish up what you're trying to say. Yes. Um, the, the, the Inspector General of Police is trying, but we still want to see more of it. Uh, the police needs more training. Uh, he has assured us, and they are doing it. Now our problem is the delayed cases in most of the, our courts. Because I held several meetings with my state commissioners of women affairs. We have over 100 cases across the states that are being delayed. Even here in Abuja, uh, Rapa is handling a very uh, 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 a case that touches my heart so much. Here in Idu, some two, three months ago, and this case is still hanging. I'm so disturbed about it because the mother just stepped out in the morning to go for a, uh, a naming ceremony. By the time she came back, she met her husband on her 14-year-old daughter. Raping her daughter, this woman almost went mental. She rushed to the court and cried out that she wanted the marriage and all. Till today, the case is still Pending. All right, we're going to address some of those some of those uh, issues. Acceptable.